My real wonderful lawn. Uh, every good lawn is going to start with the soil. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about soil testing. You who who are customers have at some point had us do a soil test on your lawn and you've gotten recommendations. Um, so uh, uh, soil testing tells us important information that we like to know about your soil and its ability to support uh, turf. Okay, uh, there are two properties we're concerned with. First are the physical properties, uh, and those properties are water holding capacity. Uh, 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 that's the ability of the lawn to actually have a, 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 a water bank of sorts uh, uh, so that you're not watering all the time. Infiltration, that's the ability of the soil to soak up moisture like a sponge. So you've got your infiltration and then your water holding like a sponge, your lawn is able, your soil is actually able to kind of hold a, uh, uh, a bank of water that the, that the grass is able to, um, uh, uh, able to take up. It uh, needs to be said that uh, you have to have a constant supply of water uh, in that soil bank throughout the summertime uh, if you're going to keep the lawn green in the summertime when it's, dirt, when it's really dry out. Okay, uh, then our organic matter contents is very important. Uh, organic matter is the living organisms in the soil, including uh, uh, bacteria and and uh, fungi uh, and uh, other organisms like earthworms and and uh, uh, insects uh, are important uh, to break down organic matter. Uh, turn it into a usable source for the plants and, and uh, uh, that uh, nitrate is able to be dissolved in water and taken up by the roots of the grass plants. So you have to have that biological engine happening. And then your chemical properties are important because if your chemical properties are out of balance, then the, uh, then the uh, that living uh, uh, biological uh, engine that is so important is going to be affected. Uh, so you have to have the proper pH, uh, and I've got the need for lime there, but I've seen pHs that are too high as well, uh, and you have to do the opposite. You may need to apply sulfur if you're having a problem growing the grass, uh, but the soil pH is going to tell you about that, and it's also going to tell you about your fertilizer needs. Uh, here in Maryland, the fertilizer law uh, requires that you cannot apply phosphorus to your lawn uh, unless you're doing a, uh, a complete seeding of the lawn, not just co-aeration and overseeding, but we're talking about you know probably renovation and starting the lawn over again, uh, or if your soil test says that your soil is deficient in phosphorus. So uh, if you're out buying fertilizer this weekend, you're going to notice a lot of materials. Uh, that are phosphorus free, uh, and the reason for that is is that the fertilizer law uh, prohibits the the sale of phosphorus fertilizers uh, uh, unless they are noted on the bag that they're actual starter fertilizers, and they're going to have those would have a high rate of phosphorus. But it it's, it says right there that you're not supposed to apply it unless you need it, based on soil test, or uh, you're reseeding the lawn completely. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, phosphorus is that nutrient that's not needed a whole lot except for in the new seedling development. Uh, so you really don't have to enrich the soil if you've got plenty. Okay, and this is what your soil test, uh, this, this is the lab that we use. We use a lab called Spectrum Analytic. Um, uh, and uh, the first thing that we want to look at is we're looking at this pH up here, okay, the soil pH. Uh, and uh, the, we want, uh, the soil test actually says optimal is uh, 6.0 to 6.8. Um, we, we actually want to see it, you know, uh, between 6.3 and 6.8. Uh, a few points here or there, it doesn't really matter. I think 5.8 uh, is probably the limit on the low side and 7 is the limit on the high. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, that basically tells you the acidity or the alkalinity of the soil. Um, the pH scale is a logarithmic scale uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, uh, below 7 is going to be considered acidic, 7 is considered neutral, 
and then above 7 to 14 uh, is going to be uh, alkaline, okay? And uh, uh, I think the worst I've ever seen as far as alkaline range has been an 8. Uh, the worst I've ever seen as far as acid goes has been a, uh, a 3.5 pH, okay? Well, if the lab does the pH test, they're going to do a second test, and the second test is called the buffer pH. So what they do, they know that the soil pH is in the acid range, and uh, they're going to take a sample of that soil, and they're going to allow it to uh, equilibrate in a solution that has been buffered to 7.0. And they measure the uh, 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 so by, by doing that, they're able to measure the resistance that that soil has to an actual pH change, where the buffer pH comes in. Uh, and by knowing that buffer pH, they're able to make the recommendation on how much actual lime the lawn is going to need to get the desired pH change. If you look down here at the bottom, this is the lime recommendation that the soil, uh, uh, the soil um, uh, lab has has given us, and uh, it basically ca calcium carbonate is uh, uh, lime. The other type of uh, lime would be dolomitic lime, uh, which has a lot of magnesium in it. But it really really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. One one has more magnesium in it. Uh, but anyway, this is how many pounds of actual lime you need to apply to your lawn per thousand square feet um, to uh, to get the desired pH change from that 5.2 up to that 6.3 area, okay? Um, and uh, the recommendation we're going to make, uh, since we apply lime at uh, 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 25 pound or 50 pound increments, uh, we're going to make a recommendation here. We're going to, we would take this 66 pounds and we would augment that to 75 pounds per thousand square feet, and our recommendation is going to be for two applications. Your first one would be for 50 pounds per thousand square feet, and your second one would be for 25 pounds per thousand square feet. Uh, so I, I hope I hope you kind of understood how that works. Uh, the rest of these numbers, you know, I've used them uh, on occasion. If we have a lawn that is uh, in really tough shape, uh, I'm able to call the uh, uh, soil testing lab and actually actually talk to a soil scientist. Uh, they're very good uh, and uh, they're able to give me additional analysis and recommendations on possibly things that we need to do. Um, so uh, they're our partners as far as helping get your lawn going. And any soil test lab that you use should, should actually be your partner and you should be able to talk to them uh, uh, specifically about your results. Uh, now the other number there that we like to look at is that organic matter. And as you can see, that organic matter is 2.9. We like to see that 4 or above. Uh, and once again, that is a measure of that living uh, 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 that living part of your soil, that organic matter, and how well uh, your soil is able to support the grass that you're trying to grow on top of it. So, okay, so that that's uh, kind of a, uh, an overview of the chemical part. Uh, it also tells us about the phosphorus and the potassium, uh, magnesium and calcium. These are these are the secondary nutrients, and they're going to tell you what type of lime, although that's not so important because there's calcium and magnesium in either, either dolomitic or calcitic lime. Uh, and, uh, but the, uh, the P level, uh, they'll give you a recommendation on how much phosphorus needs to go on your lawn and a recommendation of how much potassium. And uh, uh, usually if uh, they tell us that the lawn doesn't need phosphorus, uh, the, the lawn is going to be on our regular program, which is going to uh, supply it with the normal amount of nitrogen and uh, uh, the normal amount of potassium that we usually uh, uh, apply to the lawn throughout the year. Okay. Um, so if you have any questions about that, you can, you can uh, uh, shoot a question over to Chris and, and I'll answer that after, uh, after a while. Um, so going in, uh, now this is why pH is very important. Uh, we want the pH to be between 6 and 6.8, uh, and the soil pH directly affects the availability of nutrients 
in the soil. And if you look here, right about 6.3 to, uh, to 7.0, that's where most of your nutrients are available, at, uh, optimally available to the grass plant. So uh, you've got uh, nitrogen available there, the phosphorus, potassium. Uh, here's calcium and magnesium, which are and sulfur, which are all secondary nutrients. Uh, these others down here, boron, copper, zinc, molybdenum, uh, iron, uh, manganese, uh, aluminum, are all micronutrients. And that's good for aluminum because aluminum, that look, as it gets more acid, becomes more available in the soil. Aluminum is toxic to the grass plants. So you really, they, they just need such a small, small trace amount. Iron, on the other hand, is an important uh, nutrient. You can see, you know, you don't want to get too alkaline or else you're going to start tying up that, uh, uh, that iron and that manganese, which are, you know, kind of important micronutrients for the grass. And then this is the living part, the, uh, uh, the bacteria and the fungi. Uh, and uh, let's not forget about the insects, although they're not going to be uh, uh, quite as uh, affected uh, by uh, a poor pH. Uh, but uh, you've got to have a fairly good pH for these bacteria and, and the fungi to work. Notice, yeah, we have some uh, fungi, usually your diseases are caused by pathogenic fungi, but we need to have certain fungi which are always there that are breaking down organic matter uh, and feeding the plant. So the idea here is uh, you don't want to kill all the fungi in the soil, you want the good ones that are going to um, uh, 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 that are going to uh, continue that that biological process that's so important. Okay, so uh, now let's talk about the physical structure of the pro of the soil, and and you're you're going to want to judge this, uh, uh, you know, kind of by sticking your soil test in the in the in the ground. Our our best tester is our soil test probe. Uh, when we pull that plug of soil out, we're able to pretty much look at that. Uh, but uh, um, uh, there, there's certainly some things to be said about, you know, the importance of uh, physical properties of the soil. Uh, and uh, first thing we need to think about is the soil texture. Uh, we have three different kinds of soil, uh, and uh, they're, they're broken up by how big the particles are. Okay. Now the first first type is clay, and case, clay soils are very very small uh, and compact. Okay, that's why they use them to make bricks uh, because they can compact together. Uh, uh, you know, believe it or not, if you if you look at a brick, it, it, you can notice that if you wet a brick, eventually the water is going to seep in. That, that's because it's so compact and held together. So. Uh, uh, so hard that there uh, uh, are small capillary pores, and it is going to get wet. But it's it's not going to accept. Uh, it's not going to infiltrate. The water's not going to infiltrate very well uh, in that brick. Okay. So uh, clay is great for tractor pulls, not for lawns. Uh, you don't want uh, a, an entire clay soil. Because you're, you, it's, it's just it's just problems. Okay, uh, you're not going to get the water to infiltrate. Uh, sure, it's got a lot of water holding capacity, but a lot of times the water doesn't drain through uh, to allow enough oxygen in the soil, and, and you just have a have a tough problem. So you need some clay in your soil, but the but that uh, uh, percentage should be less than the other uh, ones. Now sand uh, is on the other side of the spectrum. Uh, sand is great for the beach, but it's not real good for your lawn. Uh, you're watering forever if you have a sandy soil because uh, as opposed to clay, clay holding too much water, well, sand doesn't hold enough because the particle is very large uh, and uh, uh, the water just has a tendency to drain right through uh, a sand layer. So um, if you take clay and sand and put them together, well, they might just work together to kind of uh, uh, give you the type of texture that you, that you really want. And then in between uh, is a texture called silt. Uh, and uh, silt, um, it's important to mention that uh, silt is very uh, structureless. Uh, and it smears uh, when, you, when it gets wet. Um, it doesn't uh, 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 do very well at all. 
there's a hand coming up. There. Um, so uh, uh, now there is a mechanical test that you can do, and and uh, the instructions for this are on the internet. Um, Basically, uh, uh, this is a good way to tell what kind of a soil that you want that you have, and this is where we want to be. We want your soil to, to be in the loam range, uh, and uh, that's going to be somewhere 10 to 30 percent clay, 30 to 50 percent silt, and 30 to 50 percent sand, and that's going to give us the proper texture. Yeah, we got a uh, question here, Rick. Um, I got a lot of application recommendation from MRW when I started with them over a year ago and I applied what was recommended back then. Should another soil sample be taken? Um, uh, we recommend soil tests uh, be done at least every three years. Uh, if the uh, uh, pH was very low, uh, like uh, uh, I would say below 5.8, uh, and you put down the recommended amount of lime, uh, uh, certainly uh, another soil test a year later would uh, um, tell you whether or not we're going in the right direction and if, the, if there needs to be additional inputs of lime uh, uh, to come along. So my answer to that is uh, 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 yes, if the soil test was bad to begin with and uh, um, you know, just to just to make sure. Now, uh, soil test is thirty-five bucks from us, um, and uh, uh, of course you can go down to the extension service, and they'll provide you with things, but you got to take it and, and uh, send it off. Where we take care of all that for you and uh, and do that. But anyway, um, I would. Uh, if it wasn't too bad, you could probably wait the three years and then just do it after you know, after three years. Does that answer the question? It was acidic, yes. Okay. All right, so so anyway, here's where we want to be. We want to be in loam, and loam seems to give us all the properties of the three different types of texture. Um, and uh, it's going to give us a soil that's going to be kind of loose and crumbly, but it's not going to fall apart too bad. Uh, you're going to have good college. You're going to have good uh, uh, water holding capacity, and you're also going to have good infiltration, and you're going to have good nutrient holding capacity in a loam soil. Okay. Um, so, and uh, I want to spend some time and talk to you a little bit about organic matter. Uh, we offer the uh, organic uh, compost top dressing, uh, and it's very beneficial. Uh, it has a tendency to be on the expensive side because of the labor involved and because of the cost of the material. It's allowed to be more expensive because more and more people are seeing the benefit uh, of putting uh, compost on their on their lawns. Uh, so there's less and less of it. Okay. Now we prefer to use the uh, uh, type of compost that comes from composted grass clippings uh, and leaves uh, that are fully composted. Um, uh, it, it needs to be said that the biosolids that come from the sewage treatment plants, there's only one that, that produces, uh, and that's the one in Baltimore, uh, and they ship out their ore grow product. But that has a tendency to be a little hot, and I, I think that uh, it's probably got uh, additional nutrients in it. Um, uh, that it, it, you know, don't get me wrong. It makes the lawn nuclear green, but uh, as far as long-lasting change of the structure of the soil, uh, I think the plant compost works much far better uh, in giving you lasting change and 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 helping to create a soil that is going to uh, really uh, support the grass. What are the benefits of organic compost? Well, we talked about improving the soil structure. It's going to loosen that compaction, uh, allow for better infiltration. Uh, it's going to uh, uh, help with the drainage, so it's not going to hold too much water, but it's also going to help with water holding capacity. So, um, uh, so it kind of becomes the universal fix, whether you're problem is uh, sand or whether your problem is clay kind of really helps to to amend both types of soil uh, and it adds organic matter and micronutrients uh, to the soil.
Okay, so your benefits uh, 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 of organic matter as far as water is concerned, uh, percolation is good in sandy soil. The particles and the pores are large, but the water retention is poor. And percolation is poor in heavy clay. Your soil particles and the pores are small. Water retention is good. Organic matter increases infiltration, so it breaks up the clay. Uh, but it also increases water holding capacity, helps the sand to hold the better get hold together better. Uh, uh, so it helps both coarse and fine textured soils uh, to improve. Okay, now um, if you've ever had a new home built, you know what the builder does. Basically, he's going to dig a hole for your foundation, build your foundation, he takes that sterile subsoil and pretty much just spreads it across uh, the uh, rest of the lawn out there. Okay, So he, uh, then he'll throw sod on top of it or he'll hydroseed it or do whatever and this is what you're left with. You can see this is a lawn that uh, uh, obviously the uh, person is, is trying to water this lawn but uh, uh, for some reason you don't have infiltration or water holding capacity in some of these areas. Uh, the way that it's graded, the water is going to drain away from some of these areas. You've got hills uh, 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 where the water drains away. Okay, uh, Back here, uh, if you've ever had a wood line uh, where the, uh, uh, the grass just kind of goes up a little slope and back to that wood. Not only do you get competition from those trees, but the water just drains right off of that hill and it just makes it very, very hard uh, to grow grass back in those areas. So um, compost, you know, some areas may need to be composted every, uh, every year for a couple of years to really help to amend that soil condition and to help that soil to uh, be a better host to the turf grass that you're trying to grow on top of it. Is this a good time to compost now? Yes, it is a good time to compost. And uh, uh, you can, even if you have crabgrass control applied, uh, the lawn can be aerated and composted here in the spring. And then I, we got another one here. Um, I read about compost made from waste paper that takes the place of peat, and it's supposed to be cheaper. Have you heard of it, and do you recommend it? I have not heard of it. I will uh, 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 look into a waste paper. Okay, I'll uh, make a note and I'll make sure that I look into it. If you find anything out, please let me know. Uh, might is, be more than that. your composting, is aeration required? Uh, it's best to be done. It's not absolutely required, uh, but it's best to be done with aeration because aeration helps to incorporate the compost down into the, into the soil. So, okay. Okay, so bottom line is, is we've got to learn to manage the environment that we're trying to grow grass in. Um, uh, so uh, it's important, you know, we usually come in after this has all been done. So uh, sometimes we're, we're uh, uh, working with something that, that might be a little bit tough. But, you know, most of our situations are uh, heavy clay soil, uh, maybe sand down in the uh, St. Mary's area uh, a little more and then you know we're able to take care of things pretty much by doing uh, compost applications and aeration and slice seeding. Uh, but sometimes you just have to work on it and you have to work that stuff in and we can help you with the tilling if, if you need to alleviate the compaction that much you need to till. Uh, we we can uh, we have a subcontractor who can uh, do that for you and, and actually works the compost into the soil. So uh, soil modifications and additions, your lime, your organic amendments, of course fertilization uh, on a regular basis, making sure you're grading and leveling the soil properly, installation of irrigation, and we're going to talk about irrigation systems a little bit later on. Uh, uh, Pre-plant weed control, whether you knock the whole lawn out and start over again, uh, if you've got that many weeds, or you know maybe it's the type of thing where here in the spring, if you start off and you have uh, weeds to deal with, uh, uh, we need to just get out there and work those weeds here in the spring. Don't worry about doing seeding. Uh, I, I, we we get a lot of uh, folks that want us to 
pre-emergent off uh, in the early spring because they want to see. And I know what you're looking at. You know the lawn. You know you've got to remember that the 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 soil temperature out there is not optimal right now for seed for for grass to grow, and that's why you might be looking at your lawn and you're going, gee, I've got a lot of bare spots I need to seed. But you uh, uh, nine times out of ten, spring seeding doesn't work. Now's the time to take care of the weeds. Uh, get some fertilizer down. It'll it'll uh, help the growth of the grass. It'll thicken up on its own once it uh, once the soil temperature gets up to uh, 55, 60 degrees. That grass is going to start to thicken, and uh, you'll be uh, 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 cussing at it, mowing it here pretty soon because uh, it's so thick. Uh, so it, it's it's just really important uh, to understand that there's a, there's a time for everything, and spring is not the time to seed. Spring is the time to take care of that weed control, and that pre-plant weed control um, is is part of your your spring because your your planting is in the fall. So a couple more questions. If I had composting treatment done in the fall, should I have it done again now? Uh, it, you know that just depends. Um, uh, if you if we have a summer like we had last year, you know bad weather is bad weather is the best indicator of how well your soil is. Uh, if you've got decent soil, uh, your lawn's not going to succumb uh, to. Uh, uh, um, uh, to the hot, dry periods of the summertime, uh, but if your soil isn't good in certain spots, like that other picture that we talked about, um, uh, you know, your soil is going to show the areas that need it. Um, so, how about we should um, should we can we comp uh, compost troubled areas only? How about under troubled areas with trees? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you if you wanted to do that. Uh, we could certainly uh, come out and measure just the areas that you want, and we can draw a diagram. Uh, and sure, yeah, we can we can do partial compost areas. Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, call the office, set an appointment. We'll we'll send a um, uh, consultant out uh, to look at the at the lawn uh, and make recommendations. Okay. My real wonderful lawn.